Hey everybody, it's Sean with the Good Dog, and we've got Mac. Hmm, <laughs> handsome boy. <laughs> Stealing my thunder. Uh, Alright, so we're going to be doing a little uh, do-it-yourself video here. Uh, we're updating our videos, so this one is uh, Thresholds. Thresholds is uh, a big part of our program, and it, it's, it's pivotal to some of the initial leadership work I do with dogs. Um, just getting a dog to be respectful of where he's at in uh, proximity to me, whether I'm moving or not, that he should stop, um, honoring thresholds, all that kind of stuff, has uh, not, only, is not only a good habit that a dog doesn't move through a door, but it's really good mindset stuff to get a dog to start, be, to, to start to be very conscious of where his owner is at and to not just disengage and move through a doorway or just keep moving when the owner stops. So what I'm looking for is I walk up to a threshold, Mac, who I've never trained, Mac just arrived uh, a little while ago uh, from a rescue. Um, he's on a prong, he's been on a prong, I know he's familiar with it. We're going to be looking to get him to walk up to a threshold, open door, loose leash, and when I stop, he stops without a sit. I don't want to spoon feed him, I don't want to say, Mac, sit, I don't want to do any of that. I really want Mac to do the work on his own. I want Mac to walk up with me. I stop, I want him to go, oh, Sean, stop. Let me stop here, and then I'm gonna acknowledge that. And when I get a courteous moment, then we move through the threshold. So a lot of people have their dogs sit at the threshold. I'm telling you, this, is, this will give you more bang for your buck, more impact state of mind for your dog, better relationship stuff. It's good all the way around. So uh, it's a minor adjustment to the old threshold thing. I don't feel you have to move through it first. I don't, you have, don't have to do any of that stuff. What I'm looking for is a courteous state of mind, checked in, tuned in, respectful. That's all we're looking for. A couple quick little notes just uh, for dog specific stuff. Um, even though I haven't worked with Mac, I met him just a little while ago. He's a big, striking dude, but he's a sweet, soft guy. I can already tell just by just by hanging out with him for a little while that he's a not a pushy guy. Um, he's he doesn't have any attitude problems. He's kind of a cream puff. So that's going to dictate how much pressure I share and how firm the pressure is with him at the thresholds. So if I had a guy who was really bratty and really challenging. I would probably be more firm at the thresholds with him because I need to have an impactful conversation with him. With this guy, because his state of mind isn't something I need to be uh, working on or, or so focused on, I can probably share softer pressure initially and it's more about teaching. If he was spinning around, pulling on the leash, rolling, biting the leash, um, jumping on us, being really disrespectful, then the threshold conversation would most likely be uh, a firmer conversation because I want him to learn to respect that, but I would also be wanting to, to have a conversation that's impactful for his state of mind to be more respectful of people. It's not a one-size-fits-all, even though all the behaviors that I train, they're all the same behaviors, but how I share them with each individual dog is very specifically tailored to that dog. So, softer guys get pressure delivered in a softer way. It's more about teaching. Uh, really pushy, bratty, really challenging guys, a little more firm pressure because we need to say, hey, you need to actually be respectful and be tuned in. That's a really important thing for you guys to be checking out with the, with the dog that you have specifically. So I'm going to walk up. If you guys have watched my, watched my videos, you know typically what I'll do is I want the leash short, but not tight. So I don't want it like this. I don't want it like this. I'm just going to fold this in half, right? And I'm not going to ask too much of him right now. I'm not going to ask him to sit or anything like that. I'm just going to walk over, open the door, and then I'm going to let him do whatever he wants to do. If he starts to move through the door, then I'm going to correct him with a little leash pressure, a little pop on the leash, and let him know that's a boundary. And not only is that a boundary, but I've stopped. So you need to stop because I've stopped, but there's, I'm stopping because there's a boundary there. So I'm teaching him a couple different things here. You ready, bud? Let's go. So that was, a, this is a very kind of soft, I don't know if you got that on the camera, but it's a pretty soft leash pressure conversation that I just had with him. I didn't pop, those would definitely not be considered pops. 
he was already pulling towards the door. I gave him a little light pressure, pulled him back, and then released it. Which is significantly different than if I have a really bratty guy. Because I will let them pull and I will pop them pretty hard if I've got a bratty guy. But if I went so heavy on the pressure with this guy, it would actually move us backwards. It would actually undermine what I'm trying to create with him. Trust, respect would get, um, would get dicey. So you have to read your guy. So now I'm going to do it again. We'll see what we we'll get. Come on, buddy. Walk right up. Let's go. Walk on up. Now, hopefully all you guys can see the demeanor from this guy, right? and why I'm treating him the way I am treating him, why I'm sharing, he's sliding everywhere, why well, I'm sharing the leash pressure and this conversation the way I am because there's absolute softness coming from all, all of his beingness. So that's why I'm, I'm approaching this fairly softly. Um, as I move through it, if he doesn't start to get it on his own, then the leash pressure will increase and we'll make sure we get a nice thing. Let's go. Walk on up. Now that was a closer to a pop. Okay, buddy. So that time, somebody was walking by, excuse me, <laughs> somebody was walking by and he got tuned out. He didn't even, he wasn't even aware of me or the threshold. Let's go. There's a little more ahead of me than I want, so I'm going to ask a little bit more of him. Let's go. Right there. Nice. So that's, that's a little bit better. So I don't want him, like, head out through the door. Yes, they, yes he waited. That's great. But his head was out a little bit. So I'd, I'd like him to be a little bit more tuned in to, like, is it okay for me to go through there again? Let's go. March right up, leash is loose, stop. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, buddy. We're trained this guy. So, so that's pretty cool. He's not giving us a lot of challenge, so this is a great example of a softer guy. Um, like I said, if I had a, f a firmer state of mind, a more challenging, pushy, domineering state of mind, I'd be pretty firm with this leash. Um, because if you're too soft, you're going to, it's going to be counterproductive. He's not going to take you serious. He's not going to respect you. And you'll actually allow him to stay in this uh, unhealthy, uncomfortable state of mind. So you, you want to use your conversation to help create more of what you want. In this case, we've already got a good state of mind. So I don't need to do a lot of work on convincing him. All I'm trying to do is teach him. Because he doesn't want to break the rules. He, he just doesn't know what the rules are. So different dogs different approach. So, now he's here, and I'd say, let's go. So you guys notice, um, whether it's at the door, at the gate, doesn't matter. I stop, he's got to stop, leash is loose. If he doesn't, pop the leash, instantly relax it. Conversation is, don't move past me, don't ignore me, stop right here. And then when I'm ready to leave, or ready to move, I say, let's go, before I move. Don't Let's go. A lot of clients, um, a lot of dog owners start moving and then give the command and that's confusing for the dog. So when you give the command, the command sets the dog up, we're going to be moving. We're going to be doing this thing. So give the command and then in the next second, you move. So it's, let's go. So as mine has time to process it before you guys actually start moving. Sometimes this one can be a, a more, more challenging one because it's actually the gateway to like outside. There's more distractions. So not a lot of pushiness, but still went past where I wanted to go. I really want him right here. Let's go. So now he's tuned out. My dogs are behind the gate over there. 
you see his forehead and the ears wrinkled, the focus, the attention is over there, not on this. So I don't know if you saw, but the, the pressure I shared was much sharper, much firmer than it was before, because now he's getting into a more intense state of mind. Not that he's trying to break this rule, but he's not focused, he's not present with me, and he needs to be present. That's that's his job. So we will try it again. Let's go. But it's good for you to see how I change my pressure and approach depending on the state of mind the dog's presenting. Much better. Let's go. There you go. So all I'm looking for is give me a courteous moment here. I stop, you should stop with me. So I'm really, I'm, I'm teaching thresholds, but I'm teaching a lot more. I'm teaching really to be aware of where your handler's at, where your owner's at, not to put tension on the leash, not to pull, not to be tuned out, not to be disrespectful. We're teaching a lot of stuff through this simple little thing here. When you're really doing it, it doesn't need to take a long time. It should just be a moment. You're not, you're not looking for any kind of like, long, drawn-out process. Right up. Let's go. I don't care which side you walk them on, left or right, doesn't matter to me. Aha! Uh -huh. Very nice. So no pressure on the leash, didn't change anything. Let's go. Good boy. Remember, this is a dog who's never done this exercise before. Brand new stuff. Let's see what he remembers. Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good memory. Good, good. Let's go. Glad to be good. What you'll find is doing these simple exercises will start to de stress, de escalate, de adrenalize, relax your dog. Um, not only get him more respectful, but get him to calm down. Um, doing these exercises right and getting the right state of mind will actually create a better walk. I mean, a profoundly different walk. So, it's not just that I, I want my dog to look respectful, I want him to feel different in his mind about me, about our life together, about coming into the environment, the whole deal. Again, I didn't ask him to sit, he's just giving me a nice thing. But you can see the value in this, in that, hey, my human stopped, oh, I better stop too. Rather than what you typically see is, my human's here and I'm out here pulling and disregarding and disrespecting, and which is really a, an indicator of where your relationship's at, which is an indicator of where everything else is at with your dog's behavior. Let's go. Walk on up. Little reward, little pet, tells him I like what he did. Let's go. Very nice, Mac. Very nice. Mm. Oh boy. So that's thresholds. Uh, don't underestimate the power, profound impact that can have on your dog, uh, your dog's behavior, your relationship, his perception of you, the house, the whole deal. Super important. Looks really simple, but I'm telling you, it's big stuff. Big part of the overall behavior puzzle that you want to put together to have a great dog. So, this is Mac. We appreciate him so much. He did awesome. I'm Sean with The Good Dog, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Okay.